This is Lake Taupo, plumb in the centre of the North Island, equidistant from Auckland and Wellington. New Zealand's largest lake, it's 240 square miles in area. World-renowned as an angler's paradise, over 400 tonnes of trout are taken from this lake each year. It's a boatman's paradise. Here you can fish, you can swim, you can water ski. There are hot pools, cold pools. In fact, a glorious place for a holiday. But the township of Tapo does not live by play alone. Surrounding the district, there's a huge forest area. The hydro schemes on the Waikato River. The geothermal schemes provide power too for the North Island. And of course, tremendous land development in this area. But let's go up and have a look at Tapo at the northern end of the lake. Wellington to Tapo is an easy day's drive, about six or seven hours. At the turn of the century, things were different. It took five days by train, riverboat, lake steamer and coach. We may be missing some of the excitement of travel these days, but we probably arrive in better shape than those tourists of the past. The travellers then, 60 years ago, came into a village which had a European population of 10. Today, 19,000 people live permanently in the borough and county of Tapo. Of course, it's not the town that people come to look at, it's the lake. Outside the post office in Taupo, a very busy place, particularly at holiday time, and I'm going to interview people at random to find out why they come to this part of the country. How do you spend your holiday? Well, we visit all the beaches. I'm not a fisherman myself, but the young boy likes to fish. My family like to go swimming. I like to go swimming. In fact, we like all the amenities of Taupo in general. Why are you in Taupo, sir? I'm here to have a good time, sir. On holiday? Yes, sir. From where? Palmerston North. With your family? With my wife. Just with your wife? Just How with do you my fill wife. in your time? Eating, sleeping, fishing, and your guess is as good as mine. How are you spending your time in Taupo? A working holiday. On what? Oh, I'm building myself a, uh, a little batch. Where are you from? The country? Uh, yes, out of Hawara. Okayawa is the name of the town. Why did you choose Taupo to build this holiday batch? Well, we've been coming up here for years now. It must be uh, five or six years now. We like the climate. Usually it's very nice weather. And if it's a bit rough, we've got the hot baths to go to. Or the, uh, or the lake if it's lovely weather. Here's a last from, on, uh, from Australia. She's been in New Zealand five weeks and just this moment arrived in Tapo. Yes, you? that's right. You on a working holiday? Uh, well, we're university students. We worked for five weeks in Wellington and now we're just travelling around. Who told you to come to Tapo? Oh, we've just heard so much about it in Australia. We just, you know, you do have, we have heard of it over there. Are you fisherwomen? No, I'm afraid not. You like boating? Yes, yes. Swimming? Yes, very much. Do you have hot pools in Australia? No, no. We have hot pools here. You'll yes, enjoy them in yes, Tapa. Yes, we saw them at, um, oh, uh, Tungano, Tungano or something like that. Tokano. I wouldn't know. Tukano. 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 Yes, Tukano. Tukano. Providing accommodation is the biggest business in any tourist centre, and Tapo is no exception. Hotels, motels, flats, the town has plenty of them. 40% of householders are absentee owners. That's to say they're people who can afford to keep a house here and use it only in their holidays. Sites having a lake view are expensive, but this doesn't seem to discourage builders. New homes are going up everywhere. Still, a family needn't own a house to enjoy a holiday here. Bob McIntyre is a television engineer from Wellington. He has a family of four. And he's chosen this camping holiday for what reason? Well, I come from Wellington, as you say, and we live by the sea. And we feel this is a lovely change for the children, particularly. And we, well, this is the second year we've been up here, and we just love it. And this is your setup, two tents, all get it into your motor car yes, back there and your quite, canoe? Yes, quite easily. You've quite got a very easily. nice campsite here, Bob, with the overlooking the, uh, the boat harbour, which is at the outlet of Lake Tarpo. How does your wife like this sort of holiday? Well, I think that's perhaps something you might be well to ask her. Well, now, before I ask her that, what does this cost you, this campsite? Uh, this costs 35 shillings a week. 
Margaret, now that the chores of the day are over, tell us, how do you like camping? Well, I like it very well for the children. I like a little bit of luxury myself in holidays, you know. How do you get on for cooking in a camp like this? Well, I don't know much about it, because Bob does it all. Bob does the cooking. <laughs> and the children. Success on a family holiday depends on largely on everybody doing their fair share. Rick, you're babysitting today, are you? Oh, yes. How old are you? Ten. Why do you like this sort of holiday? Oh, well, we go out camping and we can go out and surf ski down there and play for swims and sometimes go to the AC baths. Now, the eldest of the family is Linda. Do many of your friends at school go on these camping holidays? I think so. You'll have a lot to talk fire. about when you get back yes. to school then. And here's young Christopher. How old are you, Chrissy? Um, I'm six. And what do you do when you come on these holidays? Oh, well, um, sometimes I play on the surf ski and sometimes I play on the um, hot baths and uh, I, um, sometimes I play in the um, water gym. Have you learned to swim yet? Um, uh, no, I haven't. Uh, Time you did, a boy of six, you know. I can, I can do fair, um, dog, dog, um, fair, you know. Well, you, if you want to get on that surf ski, you've got to learn to swim properly. Now, what about trying to do it these holidays? What? Ross, is this your first visit to Tarpa? No, I've been here three years running so on. Well, I think you should tell our viewers that you live on the coast out of Wellington at Raumati. Why do you come from water to water? Well, uh, first of all, we like the change from the salt water to the fresh water. Uh, the boys are learning to ski and we feel that skiing or sheing uh, is better on Lake Taupo than it is on the open coast. And are you a fisherman, a trout fisherman? Uh, not what you call a good fisherman, but I try, mostly trolling. Now this boat that you have here, is this suitable? La Marguerite, is she suitable for sea and for lake? Uh, she's very suitable for sea. Uh, she is suitable for lake riding, but not for trolling, it's too fast. In Tarpo Motor Camp, we ran into two school teachers. Further from the camera, Anne, who's from England, been out here 12 months, and nearer the camera, Julianne, who's from New Plymouth. Now, you girls have spent the last month touring around New Zealand in your little car with a tent. Have you enjoyed this holiday? Oh, we've had a wonderful time. Why did you come to Tarpo? Well, we decided we'd do the round trip and go up the Coromandel Peninsula, down the east coast, and through Rotorua, Tarpo, and back home again. Well, this is one way for you, Anne, to find out about New Zealand very early in your visit. Is this your own little car, Anne? No, it's, uh, well, it belongs to Julianne's mother. I see, and she lent it to you for this trip. Yes. Why, why did you decide on coming to Tarpo, Anne? Was this your decision or Julianne's? Well, I think it was a mutual one, really, but we both wanted to, uh, to come. I had, I had just been through once before, uh, going down south, and, uh, well, we both wanted to come, and it seemed a logical place to stop on the way home. The Waikato River runs out of the lake at the town of Tapo. Four miles downstream are the Hooker Falls. A million cameras must have clicked here, recording this watery spectacle. Anglers prefer quieter places. The largest fish ever taken in the Tarpo area was a brown trout. It weighed 40 pounds. That was many years ago. But perhaps today's anglers dream of catching another such fish. Or one of the giant 20-pound rainbow trout, which are still occasionally taken. It's not likely that a fisherman could beat the one day's catch of a gentleman back in 1910. 77 trout weighing a total of 722 pounds. Rather more like a day's work than a day's fishing. If the angler's in luck, and most of them are, he can expect to land a trout of between five and six pounds. In fact, he can expect to land several of them. This is how most non-anglers remember Tarpo's fishermen, the row of patient figures at the mouth of the Waitahonui River. It's locally known as the picket fence, a fixture of the Tarpo scene. The person who catches a fish by trolling, trailing a line behind a slowly moving boat, isn't in with the serious anglers. 
but it's a pleasant way to fish. There's no great finesse called for. The trolling fisherman merely sits back and waits for a bite. And when it comes, this humble troller can get just as excited as any expert angler. This fellow, it's about three and a half pounds, won't set a record for anything, but it'll make an excellent meal. One of the places near Tapo which specializes in preparing trout for hungry fishermen is the Hotel Wairaki. At any time of the year, this hotel is a magnet for guests from New Zealand, North America, Europe and Australia. And not only guests come from abroad, as we found out. We've just finished a splendid lunch, and I'm going to have a yarn with Lynn Davis, our waitress at table. She comes from Brisbane. Like all young girls, Lynn, you've had a sort of desire to travel, I suppose. Yes, that's right. And you've come over to New Zealand on a working holiday. Yes. What were you doing before you came away? Office work. Do you want to go back to that? No. What are you going to do when you get back to Australia? Well, I'm not really quite sure. Would you like to do this again? Yes, maybe. I uh, may go up north Queensland and do it in one of our tourist hotels. And you have the opportunity of uh, working in the hotels in Australia too? Yes, I think so. How long do you plan to stay in New Zealand? We have planned to go home in May. The hotel's popularity and the popularity of the whole Tapo area owe a great deal to their location, as we've seen. Winter visitors are a couple of hours by car from the snowfields, and conference groups find Tapo a conveniently central meeting place. Though, just how much work a conference would get done in surroundings like these is hard to say. Does Tarpo do enough to make its overseas visitors welcome? More important still, do New Zealanders do enough? We put this question to two visitors from Scotland, Major and Mrs Brodie. Do we do enough for our tourists who come to New Zealand? Oh yes, I think so. We are most impressed, for example, at, at when we went to Milford Sound, all the organisation that it took to run the Milford track and uh, have the tunnel and all the transport there. We ourselves have hired a car, but we're impressed with the fact that a great number of tourists going about by uh, coach. coach, and I think it's very well laid on, and we think these hotels are just smashing. From a woman's point of view, Mrs. Brady? Oh, I think so. The whole thing is so comfortable, the roads are so good, the hotels, the tourist board hotels are excellent. And everywhere, as I've already said, one meets friendliness and hospitality and warmth. All holidaymakers seem to flock to Tarpo, and the money which tourists bring in provides most of the town's income. Over the past ten years, the tourist trade has grown, and Tarpo has grown along with it. But tourism is not all that's making the town boom. The geothermal power scheme at Wairaki and the tremendous amount of land development here have made Tarpo a year-round service centre. Businessmen feel their town now has a more balanced economy, as we found out from Mr Jack Painter and Mr Don Davis. So you'd be able to tell us something about the business community of Tarpo? Yes, well, the business in Tarpo now is, is slightly different from what it was two to three years ago, when it was a straight-out, shall we say, tourist town, but with the farming community growing and the farmlands coming in, the pattern is changing to a degree. There are more, uh, the trade throughout the year is more general. It doesn't rise with that great burst that it used to. More constant. More constant. Yes. And is business good here? Yes, yeah, very good. I remember coming up here as a boy and it was regarded as being desert land. Why has that changed? Well, as you know, it's a, it's a volcanic plateau. The main soil component is pumice. And it was not until the discovery of the trace elements which cured bush sickness uh, that this land has shown its potential for farming development. And what sort of farming are they doing around the Tarpo area? Uh, mainly sheep, but there are also dairy units and beef cattle units. On the western side of Lake Tarpo, most development is being done by the government. But here on the eastern side, private companies are working. This is Loch Invar Station, a 20,000 acre block that one day will be among the North Island's biggest sheep farms. Tarpo is becoming a clearinghouse for produce. As the once barren country becomes a green belt spreading round the east, west and north of the lake. 
The job of bringing in the land will be going on for many years. And as it does, the borough of Topper will become even more prosperous. Land development is the backroom boy of this area's growth. The sights and sounds the visitor remembers are these. Our stay in this part of the North Island has come to an end. We've shown you some of the reasons why Taupo is one of the fastest growing districts in New Zealand. We've shown you Taupo at work and at play.